Because how are you going to know whether you're going right or going wrong or what's good and what's not good for that particular industry if you don't ask? Hey guys and welcome to another video. Today's video is a video that's actually been requested to me quite a lot through my Instagram. People have messaged me asking for advice on this topic for literally months on end so I thought it was about time that I actually make a video on this. So today's video is about how to get legal work experience. So I've split the video into three parts. The first part is things you should think about or do before you even actually pick up a pen to write the application. The second part is about writing the application and the third section is things you can do to strengthen future applications. So, without further ado, on to the first part. Before you apply. When you're applying to law firms or chambers for, you know, vacation schemes, insight schemes, open days, mini pupillages, whatever they might be, I think it is vital to find the balance of the right number of applications. So for me, in my first year, when I was actually thinking about doing law, I made a big spreadsheet of all the chambers that I wanted to apply to, why, like what they did, salary, key cases they might have done that were interesting, how many people they take in a year, how many applications they get, the link to the the website, when the deadlines are, how long the scheme is, whether you get, you know, money back for travel and things like that for the scheme. I put all of that down into one big Excel document and it enabled me to track throughout the year when I need to apply for stuff, what I might to apply to and the more knowledge that I gained about the legal industry I thought, oh do you know what, that one might not be for me anymore. Basically write all the firms or the places that you want to apply to down on a spreadsheet first and I think also that helps you to whittle down the ones that you don't necessarily like that much. You need to find the right number of applications because you need to dedicate yourself to each application and dedicate yourself to that firm and really look into it and if you're applying to too many I think they're just going to become generic and you'll just won't really have time to write them and it will come to the point where you just think oh I'll use that from that application and that one and firms know that you when that's been done and it kind of doesn't really go in your favour. And I think that leads me on to the next few pieces of advice which is know the firm that you are applying to, know the place that you're applying to and do research. And when I say do research, I don't mean just look at the website or look at Chambers Guide or look at place. no, I mean do research. Go on LinkedIn, see if you can contact people on there that you perhaps know who work at that place or have worked at that place or know someone who works at that place. Go to the law, law fairs and open days and anything you can, talk to people people who have gone there and you want to yes go online and look at all the websites and you know maybe look at YouTube videos or look at anyone that's had contact with that place and find out the most information that you can on that place because if you're applying there you know, even if it's just for a vacation scheme, and chances are that you're applying for a vacation scheme because you eventually want a training contract there. And if you want a training contract there, that's a dedication of two years of your life to that place. So you're gonna wanna like it. So do as much research as you can, speak to as many people as you can. And then once you have all of that knowledge, leads me on to my next bit of advice, which is use that knowledge to tailor your application. If you have spoken to people and they have said, you know, something amazing about the firm or it's given them opportunity or whatever, you can use that in your application to say, oh, why do you wanna work at this firm? Because X, Y, Z. It will show the firm then that you know you've done more research than just looking online and that you've actually made an effort so my next bit of advice is to be commercially aware which basically means to understand things that are going on commercially or in the world you know for example right now brexit things like that how that's affecting the firm and how it's going to affect the clients and if you understand that then you can understand how the structure as a business works more and it's really something key that employers look for especially in a lot of interview stages they get you doing like a task that involves commercial awareness so it is something to really brush up on the ways that you you can do this and it is a constant thing it's not something you can do like the night before an interview it's something that you need to start before you've even applied so that when you do get the interview in four months time that you've had that backlog of knowledge look at newspapers you know set up a news alert on your phone and when a news story is breaking sit and ask yourself you know how would that affect the businesses that it sort of is involved with and that sector that it's from what would happen to a clients in that and understand sort of the chain events of what would happen from something happening in the news and leads me on to my other point of do not sell yourself short. People reading your application will already think that you've like boosted yourself up within the application. So if you actually haven't, they'll think, wow, if this is this person that's like boosted up, then they're not that good. So you really need to like go over and say how amazing you are and what you've done and how all the things that you've done relate to the job role and how great you're gonna be in the job. Now I'm not saying to be braggy or I'm not saying to be cocky and just back up what you're saying in your CV or in your application. And my final bit of advice for this section is start early and be organized, which links back to the first bit of advice of having the spreadsheet you know the worst thing is you know leaving it too late and finding out that the application deadlines might have passed so get on it as soon as possible preferably over the summer that you're going to apply 
So my next section is writing the application. So I'm gonna start this section with a bit of advice that I was given by a senior partner at Slaughter and May. And he said that people don't think about the following as much as they should. And it is really important to think about when you're writing applications. And that is, there's three points. You should think about who you are. Who are you as a person? What do you like, what do you not like? What do you have as a hobbies? Who are you? Then you need to think about why you want to be a lawyer. Not just, I wanna help people, I wanna serve justice, why? Why you, who you are, why does that person want to be a lawyer? And thirdly, why do you want to be a lawyer at that place? You can be a lawyer anywhere in the world, but why there? Why do you want to work there? So when actually writing the application, it's really important to structure your examples using the STAR method plus L. So use the STAR method, which stands for situation, task, action, and result. So the situation, what was sort of the context for what you did and why you did it? The task, so what were you asked to do? Action, what did you actually do? And the result of what actually happened from it. And obviously then the learning on top of what did you learn from the experience? Adding a little bit of reflection and saying, you know, next time, even though this was good or this was bad, or how would this apply to other situations? So structure your answers like that. So last year I was mentored by Clifford Chance. So the advice that their graduate recruitment people gave me when writing applications was to back it up with figures. So whenever you can, back it up with a number. If you say, oh, I was an events officer for this society and we did this event and it was a good turnout, it's better to say, I was, you know, an events officer for this society and through these methods, I enabled to boost, you know, ticket sales by X percent and that improved turnout by X percent and next time, you know, I would be able to use this method and perhaps develop it further by doing blah, blah, blah. That's a much, much stronger answer. And they also said that you have a few examples. So for the Clifford Chance application, when it was the time of me having the workshops of last year, it was 600 words. So that basically is two or three good examples. And and they say two or three good examples is better than having five wishy-washy ones. Now, another bit of advice is to link your examples to competencies. If the firm say, okay, we're looking for people with great communication skills, you know, organization skills and analytical thinking, use your three examples to back up each point. And then that leads me on to my final sort of ender points for this section, which is to make sure that it's easy to read, check the grammar, check the spelling, and check that it's in word count. So for my final section is, what else can you do to strengthen your application? Firstly, go to court. Every magistrate's court in the country you can go to, and you can sit in the public gallery, and you can get a first-hand experience of law in action. Feeding off that is marshalling, which is like shadowing a judge. Do competitions at your university, whether it's negotiation or mooting or just advocacy in general. Just get any experience that you possibly can with anything that relates to law. Plus competitions really boost applications, whether you win or not, because it shows that you've done something extra alongside your degree and that you've wanted to challenge yourself academically. You can do a debate club, a mooting club, even if you don't want to become a barrister, it could make a really good and interesting point for a written application for a vacation scheme. Scheme. you contact people with legal expertise basically you can use social media but there's you know a caveat of use it well don't just you know approach people that you don't know for the people that you do know you can use it and ask them about the firm that they work at or whether they have any work experience or you know would go for a coffee with you to talk about you know their career or whatever talking to people is just a really great way to get more insights into the industry that you're wanting to go into you can do pro bono work and citizens advice it's a really good way to get hands-on work experience really early on in the local community you can do what I did when I was like in sixth form and I basically just visited, rang up, emailed every solicitor's firm in the area that I could possibly think of and was like, work experience, work experience, work experience. And you know, you might be lucky, you might not, but it is worth a try. And so on top of that, you can get interview help and application help, whether you have a careers advisor at your university, whether you know somebody who is a lawyer, whether it's your parents, whatever, do a mock interview, get someone to read through your application um, because it can really, really help. There might be, you know, little things in it, little flaws or ways you can pull sentences together to give it a better flow that you might not see, but other people would see. You can get your CV checked. I know at my university, they offer services where you can go in and that you, you say your industry that you wanted to go into and they will tweak your CV basically accordingly to that. And finally, my my best bit of advice is even if you do get rejected to everything, which is not a note that I want to end on for this video, but if you get rejected, even if you don't get rejected, you could get accepted to everything. Always ask for feedback. Always. Because how are you going to know whether you're going right or going wrong or what's good and what's not good for that particular industry if you don't ask? They might not give you feedback. Some firms say that they don't give you feedback, but it's always worth a game to ask. So. 
that does conclude my video on how to get legal work experience. I hope you like this video, I hope it helps. Any questions as always, put them in the comments box below and I'll see you next week, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.